Coming up on the Bobcat Coach's Corner, it's all cross country all the time. We've got assistant coach Stephen Carey as well as a pair of sophomores and James Ryden and Rachel Pasco to recap a great 2013 season. Bunch of records, bunch of first place finishes, and it's all coming at you in a couple minutes here on the Bobcat Coach's Corner. Bobcat Nation, Al Weston here. Time once again for the Bobcat Coach's Corner. I got the guy with the second best beard in the athletic department over here. It's Stephen Carey. What's Thanks up? for being with us, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Going to talk some cross country today. Another great season for you guys. You know, I mean, it, it was uh, record breaking all over the place. A bunch That's of right. first place finishes for the guys. And uh, yes, uh, going into that year, I know you had a lot of youth and a lot of uncertainty. You know, you had lost some important folks in the last couple of years. And did yes, you think sir. you had that kind of potential in this squad for, for that type of season? Absolutely, absolutely. I was confident in, uh, in the recruiting class and I was also confident in the newcomers, uh, the transfers from, from Georgia State on the men's side. So, uh, and I was absolutely confident in our ability. Uh, I knew that it was gonna be tough. I knew it was gonna be a long road, but they put in the work and you know, that's all I needed them to do. I, I was pretty confident. All right, so uh, take a look at uh, the women's side in particular. I know uh, okay. eighth place finish, I believe, in the Peach Belt Conference mm -hmm. race, 10th place in the, in the region. Uh, our, our region continues to get tougher and tougher. We Absolutely got, We does. got girls setting school records and not <laughs> finishing in the top 20. Yes, but uh, so going into that season, you mm -hmm. probably knew what you were going to get out of folks like Taylor Reck and, right, and right. Uh, maybe Lena White as well. She came on strong as a walk-on for you last year. Yes, uh, Rachel Pasco, who we'll actually be talking with a little bit later in the show, uh, kind of a little bit of a surprise. Not as much of an impact as a freshman, just worked that hard in the off season. What was the, the magic uh, potion there? Um, I think Rachel, um, I mean, I noticed a, a huge difference just in the spring as well. And, and I mean, she's always worked hard. I mean, I could tell that from the get-go. As a freshman, she worked hard. Um, I think it was just a matter of everything kind of clicking and, and everything coming together. But she was definitely the biggest surprise, I think, this year. Um, I mean, she was, if I could pick an MVP for the team, it would be Rachel Pasco. Uh, I mean, not only did she set the school record in the 6K, but, I mean, she was by far one of our hardest workers. And, again, she was the most consistent runner we had all season. Uh, talk to me too. You, you lose Allison Loans going into the season with a, yeah. a, a, a knee injury. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, one of the more decorated uh, runners in school history, the first all-region runner in school history. Uh, how, how did you regroup after that and, and continue to keep fighting that way? Yeah, it was hard. Um, it was really hard losing Allison for the season. But with that said, it allowed some younger girls and s some other people to kind of step up into that role. There's no doubt with Allison, you know, we might have been a little bit deeper, but it allowed some girls to get some experience and, and see what it takes to run at a high level. Tell me about Taylor Reck, too. Uh, a, a rough start to the season, but finished strong. Had a, a couple of races late that she, she led you in, and, you know, she's a, another solid performer for you. Yeah, once again, I mean, she's just consistent for us. Uh, Taylor, I think what happened is she kind of got a little bit bogged down in the middle of the, the school year. You know, you know how it is with college kids. I mean, they school starts and, and exams start and I think she was starting to lose a little bit of sleep and, and just there was other factors going into her performances that you know you couldn't see that were behind the scenes but um, I think she did a great job of pulling it together and, and, and really finishing well for us so I'm proud of her. And Lena White has been impressive for you and, and basically kind of fell into your guys' <laughs> lap toward the end of last year. She did. Uh, that she was did. A, a great situation. Already a student here at Georgia College and, and just enjoyed running. Came over and ends up being one of your we're, better performers. We're blessed to have Lena. We really are. Um, I mean, she, like you said, she kind of fell into our lap, uh, so to speak. But, you know, she's, she's done wonders. Again, another competitive runner. Um, she's a little bit more quiet than some of the other girls, but still leads by example. And, and you know, she does everything I ask her to do. She's the, the first one to get there, last one to leave kind of thing. So, um, again, I mean, we, we have a lot of great girls on the team. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of them all. 
and all of them coming back as well. I mean, right. there's, there's yep. just one not senior learning. on the squad and 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 uh, not uh, not one that was a regular runner for you this year. So moving forward, I, I got to think sky's the limit for a squad like this. It, it? it absolutely is. It absolutely is. You know, and like I said, I think not having Allison this year allowed some some of those younger girls to gain that experience, like I was saying sure. earlier, and um, that's going to pay off. Um, pretty big for us, I think, in the next two to three years. Um, bringing back everybody, I mean, we have eight runners, and now I, I, I'm going to have a little bit more difficult time <laughs> next year picking who runs, so yep. um, that's a good problem to have. So. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's uh, switch gears to the guys' side okay. uh, and, and look at the, the Peach Belt Conference finish there, I believe, was fifth, yes, uh, eighth in the region race as well, mm -hmm. uh, and this was a squad uh, that, that you – bunch of first place finishes during the regular season and then, right, and then right. come into the uh, the postseason and, and strong there as well. Another bunch of school records for you. Yeah, uh, this was this was a, a special year. Um, I, I can't speak for the kids. I think it was for them as well. I don't think they really realized what they were able to accomplish and the step that they were able to take as far as Georgia College cross country goes. Uh, but for me and I think coach Joe Samproni, for us it was really special just seeing the level of um, of running that they were able to maintain from the first meet to the last meet. Um, and like you, you mentioned, several, you know, first place finishes, several first place finishes as a team, school record, or almost school records, um, a lot of top ten times in school history. Um, this is a special group, and, and, you know, they work together. A lot of different personalities on the team, but I think that's good. Uh, it kind of spices things up a little bit. And uh, we're only going to get better. I mean, once again, they all come back. So I'm excited about the future of both teams. And a bunch of them all in that sophomore class. We're going to be mm -hmm. talking with sophomore James Ryden uh, here in a little bit as well. Right. This is a team, again, that's <clears throat> going to be returning a lot of people and, and probably some, some, some big success for you around the corner as well. Yes, sir. Um, like, you, like you said, I mean, we have four, uh, four sophomores, three freshmen in our top seven. Nice. And that bodes well for, <laughs> for future success at Georgia College. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with James Ryden to kind of discuss how this sophomore season came about uh, here on the Bobcat Coach's Corner. Stick around. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh, no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time, time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment, and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. All right, we're back, Bobcat Nation. I got James Ryden here with me from Atlanta, Georgia, a sophomore. Uh, we're going with a psychology major looking for pre-med track, right? Yes, that's correct. Let's talk a little bit about James Ryden. What's the plan with that pre-med uh, thoughts? Uh, Hopefully to get in med school, and uh, I want to become a pediatrician when I'm older. 
Oh, so okay. Well, what, what sparked your interest in that sort of uh, uh, career path? Mm, I've always wanted to help people, I guess. And uh, my uncle is a pediatrician. He kind of nice. inspired me from an early age to do that. So. Absolutely. Well, maintaining that 4.0. I know you're coming up here on finals. Yep. Keep that going. I know James got a tough road to hoe. It's always tricky to keep that perfect great GPA going. But uh, okay, so let, let's look into this year. I mean, it was outstanding for you. Again, you, you seem to be a, a bunch, one of the bunch of folks on these teams that, you know, sophomore season was really a breakthrough season for you. What you do in the off season that really just made that much improvement for you? I really just put in the miles. Uh, Coach Carey gave us a summer training plan and even spring training plan. I tried to follow it as closely as I could, and it really paid off for me. Okay, so, so no slacking in the off season, no, no extra Cheetos or anything <laughs> like that. You're, you're getting the job done, huh? Yes. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Well, it, obviously it paid off. I mean, this was a great season for you. A couple of first place finishes a, as a team, a first place finish for you individually. Uh, I think, it was, was it at the race up in Massachusetts? Or, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, again, we've never had more than one first place finish uh, in a season as a team. Uh, was this something that you know, got to be to the point where you're, you're heading out to a race and thinking we're just going to win every one, huh? Um, I don't think anyone ever really goes into the race with that mindset. You, you go in and just, you don't really know who your competition is. You just try and do your best and if you end up in the lead, you try and keep it for as long as you can. <laughs> Talk to me about that race up in Boston. Did you, did you lead from start to finish? Did you try and hold a little bit back and give a big kick at the end? What was the plan? Um, my plan was to kind of start out slow. And uh, through the first miles, kind of middle of the pack, and I just slowly worked my way up to, by the two and a half miles, in a pack of me and three other guys, and we were slowly pulling away from everyone. And when, I, when we hit the third mile, I was just, I was feeling good, so I just took off, and from there, didn't look back. Awesome, awesome. So, well, worked out well for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you left it all out there on the course. Uh, looking at uh, this sophomore class, again, there's, there's a lot of guys there, a lot of guys in this freshman class, and it was uh, somebody finishing first different each week, which is rare for a cross-country team, at least my, in my experience. Uh, more often than not, it's, it's one guy or gal out front, and then the rest kind of shuffle in line behind there. Is it really just that competitive in practice and everything as well? Um, it, yeah, we're... It's, it's competitive. All of us want to continue leading the team, and it's, it's tough to do that every week with the guys we have. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, we talked with Coach Carey about uh, the personalities on this team. I guess you're probably most likely to succeed with that 4.0. Who's, who's the big goofball on the squad? The big goofball. Ooh. Definitely Michael Ziegler. Okay. Definitely Michael Ziegler. He is... He's, He's a character. Yes, I've seen Michael around campus. I, I would probably have to <laughs> agree with that scenario, but uh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, with this, uh, the setup of the cross country uh, season for you guys, I know a lot of the, the other teams in the Peach Belt Conference will race against each other here in the region. You guys, uh, Coach Samproni, it's one of his hallmarks all along is to, to get you to travel around the country and, and see different things. You went up to Newport News, Virginia. You went up to, uh, to Boston as well, in the Massachusetts area. I know in the past we've gone to Minnesota and in other areas of, of the country. Is that part of uh, what brought you maybe to Georgia College, is, is seeing the opportunity to, to travel the world a little bit, or at least the country? Um, not really. What brought me here was, what first attracted me here is just the academics and the school life here. Uh, that, that, was, that was my main interest when I was getting recruited and looking into schools where I wanted to go. That's a good 4.0 answer right there. Okay, what, what else uh, helped you make that decision to come to Georgia College? Um, I just, I really liked the campus and uh, I, I really wanted to continue my running career and this looked like the best spot to do it. Absolutely. So. All right, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, so James, uh, again, we talked about this with Coach Carey in the first segment, but uh, looking forward, got a lot of guys coming back. Really the only senior that you lose is, is Tucker Forbes, who, who is a great uh, leader, but uh, didn't necessarily lead the pack uh, running-wise. Um, so tell me about where you think this team can go down the road. Well, our hope is to eventually make it down to nationals. Um, to do that for next year, it'd be the top three finish at regionals. And uh, I definitely think we'd, next year we have a small window to do that, but senior year we really should. I, I really do expect us to make it out there. Again, that, that full pack of sophomores, add in those freshmen, and, and each year as you, as you get better going along. 
Um, to, to look at that competitive element, is that uh, something that helps you guys strive to, to continue to achieve? Is it, is it beat the guy next to you in practice and that helps you beat uh, the other teams in the conference as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, with these types of goals, it, it really motivates us to get out there and run every day because some days you're, you just really, like, it'll be like cold and raining and you just don't want to run. But with those types of goals and we hold each other accountable and just we, we get out there and do the work. That's admirable because as you may be able to tell from my physique, not a whole <laughs> lot of running in my past. Not a big fan of that. But uh, I, I like to run for goals, not just running for running's sake. But uh, my goodness, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> Uh, do that to yourselves. But uh, our time has come to a close here. Thanks for being with us, James. I appreciate you your time, me. buddy. Good luck with finals. Keep that 4.0 rolling. We're going to be right back with uh, Rachel Pasco, who I believe also has a 4.0. What is with this team? And uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes with Rachel uh, here on the Bobcat Coach's Corner. Adopting a new pet is a rewarding experience. And shelter pets make super pets. Your new best friend will steal your heart, bring you happiness, and enrich your life for years to come. You can make a difference in the life of an animal. Adopt and bring home a shelter pet today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Krugs, Zink or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Hey, Bobcat Nation, back here once again on the Bobcat Coach's Corner, and I got the best-looking bunch of this three here today. It's going to be Rachel Pasco. Thanks for being with us. No problem. Glad to be here. All right, so we talked uh, a little bit off-camera about your, your, your career track here. The plan is to go into veterinary medicine and, and work with horses. Uh, now, the path that you're going toward that, that's, it's a biology track here at Georgia College? Yes, sir. And things going well for you there? Yeah. You're hanging on that 4.0 mm -hmm. finals week, big for you right now. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> so you'd rather get this interview over with and go back and study, I'm sure. But uh, okay, so uh, horses and, and, and that sort of element, what uh, what made you interested in that for a career path? Um, well, I've always liked animals in general, um, but I started riding when I was five years old. Um, I actually have two horses, so I've grown up with them. Um, and I just kind of decided that's what I wanted to do. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. My wife has a cousin that works in Kentucky with, you know, some of the, the derbies and all that kind of stuff, and it's a very rewarding feel, and I, I hope you get the opportunity to get into it. That'd be awesome. Uh, so the next step here, uh, we, we mentioned uh, off-camper, uh, looking for maybe a transfer to, to UGA to work through that equine program, or, or maybe Auburn as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do my four years at Georgia College, um, and then I plan to transfer after that. Okay, all right. Well, excellent. Good luck to you. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit of cross-country. Uh, as I mentioned with, with uh, Coach Carey in the first segment, uh, freshman year, you, you were in a couple of races, not really in the top, uh, you know, couple, and then, then all of a sudden we just explode here in the sophomore season. What did you do? Can we bottle it? Can we sell it? Can we make millions? <laughs> well, you know, I was kind of frustrated with my freshman year, um, and so it really pushed me to work extremely hard. Um, I put in the miles. I did all the workouts that I needed to do. Uh, I just wanted to come back as strong as I possibly could. Okay, so Coach Carey must be a heck of a coach because that's what uh, Coach R or uh, the, uh, James Ryden said as well <laughs> was uh, do those off-season workouts and then then boom it just it just comes in into fruition that way. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Well, again, maybe we ought to hire that guy see what's going on. Okay, so uh, looking at that season, uh, it, we had the, the the great finishes during the regular season, bro breaking records yourself as well on that and uh, and. Going into this year, did you feel like you had that potential to be able to, to put forth those sorts of times? Um, well, I worked really hard, um, so I was hoping, you know, that those times would come through, and it was just really exciting and rewarding to see it actually happen. 
Absolutely. Well, I mean, again, you want that hard work to turn into something, and it, <laughs> and it did for you, for sure. Uh, a little bit of competition on this team as well between yourself and Lena White, and you also include Taylor Reck as the season got uh, into the last couple mm -hmm. of weeks. Um, is that, does that help drive you? Does that help make you a better runner when, when other runners are running well? Definitely. Um, I think because everyone's working so hard and everyone wants to get better, it just makes you really competitive and you, it makes you want to get better for your team so you can continue to do better in your races. Absolutely. Now, it was, the, was it the 6K or the, the 8K record that you broke this 6K. year? 6K. Okay, so in that race, uh, as you're going through it, did you feel like, uh, like things were running pretty well for you? Did you feel like you were ahead of time? Um, well, I, don't, I didn't actually know anything about the record um, when I went in, so I just wanted to go and you know, have a good day and just run the best that I could. Um, and coming out, you know, obviously, I ran well, so I was excited about that. Now, I know, uh, and I believe that was the, the case where actually the, the previous record holder, Allison Loans, on the team with that knee injury, and she was actually there at the race greeting, greeting you at the end. Yeah, she was. Um, I came across the finish line, and she was like, she was so excited. She was like, you broke my record. Um, so, you know, it was really cool for her to be there and be so supportive. Yeah, and what does it mean, do you think? I mean, that's a girl who's, who's done it, you know, as a cross-country runner for Georgia College. As I mentioned earlier, our first all-region runner in school history. Uh, and, and this is a person who probably could get a little bit down with that knee injury and not being able to, to be a part of the team. What, what does it mean to still have her in the fold and, and know that she'll be coming back next year? Um, it's great because she's a great asset to the team. Um, she's very competitive. She makes us all work really hard. Um, it was just great for her to still be there with us. Okay, well, it's easy to get you to work hard when you don't have to work hard yourself, you know, just <laughs> cracking the whip while you're sitting there in a chair, I guess, but I could do that. <laughs> but Allison, a great gal, and another one of these high GPAs on this team. Is, is the academic element, uh, is it a focus as a team? Do you help each other in, in that realm as well? Um, we don't really hang out and do that kind of stuff together, but we all know that like we need to keep our GPAs up. Um, we, we're all very focused on school and know that we have a plan with where we want to go. And we know that academics are extremely important. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I know it's not uh, easy to maintain those high GPAs at a, at a great academic school like Georgia College. What made you interested in coming uh, to being a Bobcat? Um, well, I went to a lot of different schools um, to visit. And when I came to Georgia College, it just felt like home. Everyone here was so nice. Um, like we were, my mom and I were walking around and we were lost and someone's like, can we help you? You know, just having that atmosphere of people being here and being nice. And of course I wanted to run in college. Um, so that was another reason that I chose Georgia College. Now, did you, did you have an idea on that, uh, that biology right away or was that something that you kind of bled into after uh, some of the liberal arts requirements here? <laughs> um, I knew about it coming in. Um, I, in high school, I loved science courses, um, and so I decided biology was the thing for me. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so hopefully I'll stick with it for the four years. <laughs> awesome. Well, tell me your uh, favorite place on campus outside of uh, maybe that, that uh, cross-country uh, track on West Campus. Um, I really like front campus because on nice days I like to like go out there and just sit and study and hang out. and just There's always people around playing frisbee, and it's just nice to be there. There's always people around. Great common area. Now tell me... Uh, future of this program. Again, you're not losing anybody that was a regular runner for you this year uh, to graduation. Uh, do you guys think uh, battling for Peach Belt Conference Championships and region titles, things like that, is that on the horizon for you? I think definitely because our team is so young. Um, we're all very competitive and we all want to get better and I know that we're going to probably have a good recruiting class coming in. Um, so, you know, the goal is to always do the best that you can. Um, if that means, you know, we win the conference, we go to nationals, anything like that, you know, it's a great thing. Well, there you have it right there from Rachel Pasco. We're looking forward to a great future, but it was a great season as well here in 2013 for Georgia College Cross Country. Our time has come to a close. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a, have a great day, Bobcat Nation. Thanks for being with us here on the Bobcat Coaches Corner.